Well, do you remember when we were working during the pandemic and it was only outdoors? Oh and it God. would be raining. It would be pouring buckets. They're under an umbrella and they're just like no sympathy for me whatsoever. No sympathy. Making me run back and forth soaking in the rain. It was like dehumanizing. I'll never forget the way people treated because me Because I that. need a drink. It was It was just thing. a drink. It's just a drink. Like, it's just a drink, dude. I thought I saw you late last night in Brooklyn. 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 So, uh, 9 11. <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> Shit, sorry, that's fucked up. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not funny. I think it's funny. It was totally constructed by the Bush administration. <laughs> Bush did 9-11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we both know Bush did 9-11. He did, yeah, he did 9-11. He was just sitting home playing video games, fucking Ooh. watching football, choking on pretzels, whatever the fuck else Have he did. Have you ever seen the Norm Macdonald like, running joke? before he passed away about 9-11. Yeah. He like used to just mention 9-11 to people on his podcast. <laughs> Watch them get uncomfortable so he'd laugh about 9-11. JetBlue Air, Airlines ranked first for satisfaction among all North American airlines. But you know what ranked least in satisfaction? 9-11 Airlines. <laughs> what a terrible name for an airline. It reminds me of that tragedy. <laughs> Oh, 9-11. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't laugh at 9-11 again. 9-11. <laughs> 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 I'm I try to tell him not to laugh. Adam. I know. I walked through blood and bones in the streets of Manhattan trying to find my brother. Jesus. Yeah, he was in northern Canada. <laughs> I'll send it to you later. Dude, you funny. know what's kind of crazy is actually, so being being from the Midwest, mm -hmm. and I, I lived in Minnesota when 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. My sister was leave, living in between New York and the Midwest at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a tough day for everybody, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those things. Uh, and uh, <laughs> now living in New York for this long, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm on like a, a thread of text messages with a bunch of people I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And somebody posted this text and it just said, man, there's something I forgot about today. I don't exactly remember what it was, but I think I was supposed to remember. And I strangely got fucking offended. You were like, you forgot about that tragedy? You forgot about that, that tragedy? That tragedy that happened? That false flag operation? Sorry. No. <laughs> I was in middle school at the time, so it didn't really like. I was just pissed that my parents didn't pick me up from school. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this could have been the greatest snow day of all time. <laughs> Everybody else was getting picked up, and there I was. Like, of course, of course, I'm gonna have to stay till the end of the day. <laughs> <It's not funny. laughs> Although. In math class, I mean, we didn't do anything really that day. Like, all the teachers obviously were distracted. So we were like listening to the radio. Just in class, listening in to the radio? In class, listening to the radio. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And you were here, so like, wh where where'd you get, where were you in middle school? In, in Queens. Queens. In Queens, in Queens yeah. yeah. And so could you see it? Not, not from where I lived, no. From where I live, like, if I go to certain I don't want to say hills, but like certain blocks, I can see the skyline, but I, I could never see the Twin Towers. But it, like the smoke and everything didn't... Oh, the smoke, yeah. The, yeah. All, the whole, like, everything was like all hazy and stuff. It was weird. Weird day. Yeah. Weird day. That was, a cra that was a crazy day for me. I was living in this house with like a bunch of my knucklehead friends, and <laughs> we were... 
we were so broke that our television, uh, we didn't have an antenna for it, so we would take a, it's so, so ridiculous. We would take a paper clip and we would put that into the back of our television mm -hmm. and that became our antenna. And so you kind of like turn it to dial it. To, oh my God. It, <laughs> I was poor. Uh, um, but for whatever reason, I woke up early that day and I had one friend that I lived with who had a cell phone and it, he had left it on the coffee table and I came downstairs and like the cell phone is blowing up and I was just like, uh, shit man it's like 9 a.m there's like no reason any of us should be up this early for how reckless we lived our lives <clears throat> and i finally grabbed the phone I, I could see like all these messages i went i woke up my my roommate who had the phone and it was his business partner who was like you need to turn on the news so i turned on the television and i'm trying to dial it in on the paper clip <laughs> and uh like oh man what is going on and this guy knew that our television was shit. So he showed up at our house with a television and just walked in and just dropped it down on the, uh, on the coffee table. And then we watched it. And you were just in school wishing your parents would pick you up. <laughs> yeah. I, well, you know, it was, you know, I was in school. Like we had just gotten to school because this was at like eight and nine AM. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Like, there was this little like shithead kid who would always like tell tall tales, I will say. <laughs> and he's the one who told me. The little boy who cried wolf. Exactly. Like <laughs> he's the one who told me about the Twin Towers. And I was like, shut up, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, really? God, why are you being such a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, you know, two thousand plus people are buying, dying in like an inferno. Yeah, I know, but you know, Fucking I didn't believe Jimmy. it. Fucking Jimmy. <laughs> it's it's weird because I don't remember like most people's names, like from high school and stuff. Especially because I went to a big high school. But I remember his name, and it's probably just he's because he's because of that one fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> you know that one fucking day, you know. Yeah. Just. <laughs> I got. Uh, ah oh, man. Wait, so you're 30, 32. 32. I'm thirty-two. Did you go to any of your uh, reunions? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you gonna go to? Them? First of all. I didn't graduate high school. I got a GED. What? I got a GED. I had no idea, really? Yeah, yeah, I did not graduate. Well, the thing is, is that I, well, I was enrolled at LaGuardia, like the performing arts Whoa! school. Yeah, that fame, one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know where I live. It was a two hour commute for me. I couldn't take you, it anymore. But okay? you were also, you were going to LaGuardia for like, for uh, visual, arts. visual arts. Yeah, visual arts. which a lot of people don't know that they do. Like, it's actually mostly visual arts. But people don't know of it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. outside outside of New York and yeah. like New Yorkers. Like, I mean, it was know. great. I got a lot of really cool like free like classes that I normally wouldn't have taken. Like I got to take like legit like photography with like a dark room. Like I got to take like paint yeah, yeah. classes, like ceramics with like a kiln and everything. Like it was really cool. But my parents were getting divorced at the time. And like I thought I was dealing with it well, but I wasn't. Like teenage Ariana was like, I don't care. Whatever, mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that was a big factor in the situation. But, Wait, so, yeah, but so, I got my GED, I went to college. Yeah, but so, so how old were you when you left though? Uh, I mean, I kind of stopped really going to, like I cut a lot for a long time before I like officially. So what was cutting like in, in New York? You just got awesome. on a train. What are you talking about? I no, no, not. <laughs> Of course it's awesome. <laughs> Not going to school fucking rules, dude. It's it the awesome. best, dude. Well, it's first so much of all, fun. I would just go into Manhattan by myself <laughs> because that's where my school was. So my parents really couldn't question me going to Manhattan by myself. And then I would just take the train up to Washington Heights and drink Colt 45s in the park all day with my friends. <laughs> That's awesome. That's big, that was my life. Like I, yeah. 
From like, I but from like what age? Like probably, ju like, junior year or something like that? I wish. I wish I was that good, but probably like middle of sophomore year. Sick. I just like stopped going to class. And I was like, I can't go back. I've already missed so much. <laughs> I'm like piecing together some of the conversations we had. I did not know that you did that that <laughs> Oh, I was a bad kid. Like, I don't think that children were meant to grow up in New York City. <laughs> really? I mean... I don't think it's that great of a place to grow up because once you are able to like go out on the train, like, what are your parents gonna do? Like, they can't take your car keys away. Like, how were they going to stop me from doing anything I wanted to do? So you're saying no children in New York? No children at all. I'm an antinatalist. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely thought about it. And I was like, it probably didn't help that I could just do whatever I want. Although my mom was like a little fucked up. She like... Yeah, but they were in the midst of a divorce and like, you know... Yeah, you know, and she was like... You know, not not her fault. Like not because she suck, soak, suck. Not she didn't saw, seek it out, but she was kind of a victim of like the whole opioid crisis. I'm saying that again. Of the whole opioid crisis. And so, what year would this have been? This would have been like when I was 16. So like 20. 2005, maybe. 2006, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right that. in the height of it. Yeah. Exactly. So, and that was happening in New York, too. Yeah. Like, we well, all know of it, of like, obviously. It's just the way they were prescribing things. So she broke her shoulder, and they prescribed her, like, a lot of Oxycontin. <laughs> and, like, she was, like, you know, on pain meds and everything. But then, like, she didn't realize she was addicted to them until she tried to stop taking them. Because you go through withdrawals. So it, like... She was like zonked out for part of the time that I was in high school. Like, what is she gonna do? She's all fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was all fucked up too, but on more traditional, more traditional. Full forty-five. More traditional yeah, yeah, yeah. drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy, man. I, you, mm -hmm. it, it's it's weird. It's being like a a transplant in New York. When I first moved here in my twenties, it was like. Uh, we, we used to joke around a lot about it, like other people that I met that had moved here in their 20s of like the unicorn, which was like, not like the one that's willing to have a threesome with you, but like the unicorn in terms of like meeting somebody who was born and raised in New York. Mm -hmm. Just because <clears throat> you guys all had your like insular groups already. And we, as transplants, mm -hmm. moved here and we had to create our own community or meet our own community, find our own friends. And so we would find people that were born and raised in New York and you wanted to latch on to be like, <laughs> just, just like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, like, what, what, you know? And just like people my own age, like, yeah. like why, why are we not relating with each other? But then as I've gotten older, I've seen like a lot of, like you and Peter, and I've heard a lot of Peter's stories and I've heard your stories now. Uh, but like, it wasn't that different what do you mean? It wasn't that different from like how I grew up. Like I was skipping yeah, school by yeah. 16, 17. Difference is I had a car. Maybe some kids are just bad. <laughs> <laughs> we were Maybe, born, we were born uh, bad to the bone. <laughs> what, what, what would my therapist tell me? It's schema therapy. This is the only people, <laughs> these are the only people that I know and the only people I can deal with and like whatever. It was, it was also just like the fact that I, honestly, I feel like school in this, I don't know if it's in this country in general, but like for that place, it's like a gifted school. Like I had to like audition to get in and I yeah, had yeah. to like have a portfolio and everything. And it was a full three periods longer than regular school, which is already long. So it was 10 periods. So it was like 8 a.m. to like 5 p.m. And it was so much. Like and, I just like then, couldn't take it. And then the trans it. transport and on both sides of it. Four yeah. hours worth of freaking commuting like yeah I don't know you, when you're a kid you don't really want to do that like I don't know I bet only chalk it up to like being gifted or whatever but, like also I just didn't want to like do it 
I'm just like, I'm tired. <laughs> Yeah, you get you get into bartending, and bartending is was I don't know about now was a career that you could have. Yeah, this was a career track that you could have in New York City that you could make a decent amount of money. Like yeah, like I knew bartenders that own homes. Personally, I think that the issue that I have with non like the fact that none of us are in a union like it is a trade and it is with our bodies and i don't think that people are taken care of no. like we don't get breaks no. no no job that i have ever worked in the service industry since i've been 16 years old so. even even now with the laws that are put in place no it it's, it's, it's all the laws. Laws. it's not the laws because there's pressure from your coworkers and from management and owners to not do what you're supposed to do for yourself. And when you get in and you're young, you don't care because you don't feel it. But you do need breaks. You do need to sit down. You do need to drink water. You do need to eat because you're a human. And I think that that would be what, like if I were to be like a union rep for like bartenders or service people, that would be what I would be fighting for, is like the breaks, the family meals, like. Dude, the health insurance. It's it's a big deal. And the it, health insurance, the dental insurance. These are all things that like in this industry, if there was, if there was a union that could step in and do exactly what they do in the film industry, mm -hmm. where they have like different ranks of different things. We're like, mm -hmm. hey, you work for a small mom and pop industry. Mm -hmm. So you can now belong to this union. Mm -hmm. Now we might not, <laughs> we might not back you up when you didn't get your 15 minute break, but you're allowed into group insurance. Yeah. And it's like, there's so many missed opportunities on the union side and almost every business owner that I've ever talked to. Wow, Joel will not like anything that I'm saying. But honestly though. I don't give a fuck, I'm fine with it. It's not about, like it's not about Joel. As, as far as like, and I've said this to him, service industry bosses, 99% of them have treated me like absolute garbage. Joel is a gem of a Joel, boss. the owner, I will I will say this on camera. I don't, like no, I Joel's an amazing boss. Joel's Joel an amazing boss. Joel is one of the greatest bosses that I've ever had. In, no, like, he's an amazing ever, boss. And ever. He, an amazing Joel's an boss. amazing boss. He cares about us. He doesn't want like he he does. He cares about us. His, his and he's hand, not just trying to exploit us for whatever sake. Well, no. And that's all I ask for. You know. He, and he, his his hands are tied a lot of the time too. That's true. In that if there was an industry overarching mm -hmm. uh, uh, union mm -hmm. that was just like I was able to like pay into that just to be able like I mean Joel gives us a 401k yeah. that's unheard of in that's unheard of in true. bars he gives a 401k he's happy to comply with like industry like yeah. as far as like other places I've worked other places will try to like skirt the rules fuck you over that's not this place. He, he really does try his best. Dude, the, but it's hard. It's hard to like go above and beyond when everyone else like it's not possible 
business-wise to like go against the grain in this way because you'll just fail financially. Like he yeah. can't he can't be like, oh, you all make twenty dollars an hour now. Blah. Like he would, the business would crash and burn. Like it's it's not yeah. it's not up to just him. Like it has to be like a broader scope. So it's not like. We're, this isn't a criticism towards Joel. It's like a criticism towards the industry as a whole. The industry as a whole, and, and the industry as, as a whole that's being held accountable by New York. New York right now, the rents are crazy. It's I, insane. I, I was telling you that like, I was doing a little bit of work for a restaurant down in Soho, where you're just hanging out, and I found out that their rent was $36,000 a month. Thirty-six thousand dollars. Really me. Based it, on how it is down there. It's yeah, like, based on how it is down there. But like, it, that's that's insane. I just don't know and, how you can make that much money, like, if you're doing something like more niche. Like the only way to like consistently make that money if is you're like CVS, and we don't need any more like CVSs and banks and shit. Like it's it's becoming impossible that, that's for a small business to survive. And that's the thing is that all these small businesses are being like supplanted by large box industries. So it's going to be a bank. It's going to be this. And this and this is something that like I've been dealing with personally. I've seen it happen in the last 10, 15 years in New York. Mm -hmm. You've born and raised here. No, I've seen it. This is like one of the one of the craziest things. I and I always give this as like a, a really silly example, mm -hmm. but like. Let's think about Spider-Man, right? No, 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 hear me out, hear me out. So fucking, uh, what's her fucking name? Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. Mary Jane wants to get a job on Broadway as a Broadway singer, right? And so Mary Jane, uh, she, she can't afford that. So she gets a job at a diner and she gets a job at a diner. And that diner, she makes just enough money that she can have a home in Queens or Brooklyn, or wherever. It's not Manhattan. Fine. Mm -hmm. It's whatever. The rent increases on the restaurant. And so the restaurant can't exist anymore. And so now, Mary Jane doesn't have a job in that restaurant. But the rent increases for everything, uh, for, her, for her personal rent. And so now she needs to get another job besides that, which is outside of the city. That's the only way that she can do it. She has to live further out. So the, it's, it's, so what ends up happening is that quickly, New York loses the server in the diner, which means that the server at the diner isn't the singer on Broadway. So Broadway le loses the singer. <laughs> the singer can't date Spider-Man. We no longer have Spider-Man. It's a dangerous city. <laughs> the singer can't date Spider-Man. <laughs> No, but but it's the, it's the scaffolding effect of what's yeah. happening with these with these higher rents. Yeah, it's like Dubai it needs slaves. That's the only way. That's the only way this is heading, Josh. It's the only way it's heading. It's true. Yeah, you constantly think about moving out of New York. I really do. Fucking born and raised here. I think about it a lot because I would like to one day own a home. And I cannot hear. At all. It is, it, it is physically impossible for me to ever buy a home here. $3.2 million for on this block. My house that I currently live in is worth over a million dollars. Like, this isn't a brag. My house is a piece of shit. The only reason it's worth anything is because of the, the land. Dirt, it's literally the dirt <laughs> underneath it. Exactly. Yeah, it's crazy, My house man. is a piece of shit, seriously. And, but it's worth money. I couldn't afford to buy the house that I'm in. My parents bought it for like 250 and it's worth over a million now. In the sticks. That's an hour and a half out of Manhattan. Dude, I, I, dated, I dated a chick. Her parents bought a, uh, an apartment uh, right off Washington Square Park. They bought it in uh, 1982. They bought it for $120,000. When we say a house, like it's like townhouse? a townhouse. No, it's it's. I mean, it's it's a townhouse, but like literally, their their balcony looks at the uh, the arch, right there. Oh, nice. They bought it for 120000 They bought it for the same amount of money that my parents bought their house in Minnesota in the same year. And now that thing is worth like what fucking eight million dollars? That's 
crazy. It's crazy. She is. It's completely insane. My God. In, my God. My God. All I'm saying is that if I moved upstate to like the Finger Lakes for 300K, I could get an amazing house with like three bathrooms. But what are you going to do for work? I don't give a shit. Did you say OnlyFans? I said I, I said I don't give a shit. <laughs> I heard OnlyFans? What? OnlyFans? Uh, I'm going to sell feet pics. Like I went to school for illustration and graphic design and I stopped doing it because I was like, oh, you know what? This is pretty cool. I'm making good money. I should just be a bartender and like take it really seriously. And I don't and know. And we take it, we, you and I take it very we seriously. We do take it seriously. Yeah. It's just, it's hard. Now that after everything with the pandemic, it's like harder to care. Because people are being more stingy with us. Well, people <laughs> are seeing stingy with feel. us and people, people are, you know, like, <laughs> You know, people are... People are being disrespectful, honestly. Disrespectful. They... I don't... I'm not a very prideful person. I'm not proud. It's... But I don't appreciate being, like, just spit at. Not literally, but, like... Yeah, preferably, like, spit at. Just... I just... People have been very rude. They were rude during the pandemic, too. They were rude during the pandemic. They were fucking super rude. You know... Like, well, do you remember when we were working during the pandemic and it was only outdoors? Oh and it God. would be raining. It would be pouring buckets. And they would be standing there looking at me in my eyes. They're under an umbrella. And like the, 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 the old Aperol umbrellas, they're under an umbrella. And they're just like no sympathy for me whatsoever. No sympathy. Making me run back and forth soaking in the rain. Dude, I would, I would be walking out with tins over my like, head. I'll never just, forget it. It was like dehumanizing. I'll never forget the way people treated because me. Because I that. need a drink. It was. That it was just thing. a drink. It's just a drink. Like it's just a drink, dude. That that was really my like I you know I'm not here to like I'm not a. I don't know. It just it, it was awful. It was an awful. Feeling. It was an I awful really awful hated. time. And I don't really think that awful. people even fucking understood how fucking they awful it was. For them. It was terrible, dude. Like we would be like making no money, mm -hmm. and everyone's just like, "Oh, you're collecting money from the government." It's like, no, I'm literally I'm working. I'm working for a business. I'm 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 abstaining from checks from business from the government to make this happen for you to have your fucking Aperol spritz. And you're a fucking prick about it, man. That was really fucking, mean. That was a fucking terrible time, man. It really changed me. Like, I haven't been really the same. As far as, like, bartending, I haven't been the same. I know that other people were more positive about it, but I felt, like, so downtrodden by that whole experience. Me and, me and Steven were, like, soaked to the bone. Like the whole, like probably like eight times that whole summer, and people were just there, like, can we get our check? We've been, and I'm like, I, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> when I, you know, I, I tried so hard, and I, I, uh, I, hey, what's going on? I, shit. Those, those are the examples that change it. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you doing some bubbly girl? No, no, no. That's just, I pop it. I pop it and lock it. Pop uh, it and lock it? I pop it and lock it. Dude, are you waiting for something? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I probably should drink this scotch. Uh, can I get a glass of uh, sparkling? Sparkling what? I keep it. I keep it cool. Are you drinking scotch with a chaser? Do you have a bubble chaser? <laughs> Sorry, we got so heavy about the service industry. It's really not that bad. It's just. It's really not that bad, but no, but it is heavy. It's something that's very important that people should talk about. People need to understand. I think people don't understand. What's people don't about. understand, and they don't understand like how hard we've all been hit, and like. And how pe people continuously get hit by it. 
It's um. It's an industry that's been continuously looked down upon, and it's been like treated as secondary of just like, oh, like how many how many times? I mean, it gets different. Again, we're like the ten ten year discrepancy, but like when people ask me, they're just like, so what do you really do? It's like, fuck you. What do you yeah, really people do? People have done that kind of shit to me too. Like for yeah. sure, they're like. What do you like do then, like other than this? <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know, like live my life. Like, the, here's the thing though, is that I'm a big proponent of your work not being your life. Like I've always been a fan of like, that's a, a big part of what drew me to bartending is that I could live like bare minimum. Like I'm not trying to be rich. Like I just want to be bare minimum and do what I want to do. I'm not trying to live to work. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. And, and that, that was that was like the whole like uh, allegory that I was saying about like the Spider-Man thing. Mm -hmm. Just like, of like, yeah, like when I moved to New York, all I wanted to do was play in bands. Oh, here we go! And it was possible and I just, I'm, I'm seeing it as something that's less and less possible for yeah. artists and musicians to be able to do these things. I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen when the robots take over. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I, you know, but I, I think it's also one of the reasons that probably, you know, like maybe prior to the pandemic, so many artists, musicians, and different people were drawn towards uh, bartending is that there is an artistry it's to it. It's just creative enough. It's, yeah, I, I, but I just, I don't know if that's going to be a trade that's going to exist in five years from now in New York. I hope it is. I, I mean, hope so. Absolutely. Yeah. That's another thing. I mean, I don't know the beginning of the cut, but I was honestly thinking as I've taken time off, like, should I be like a labor organizer? Should I become that person that like brings it together. I don't know if it's possible in this day and age. It's not up to small businesses to just change things individually to make a sweeping change. That's just now how, that's not how anything has ever happened or how anything has ever worked in the history of anything, <laughs> like, <laughs> ever. But the thing is, is like, <laughs> dude, that, you know, again, not saying that we would need to unionize, but like, you know, you know, there's what, seven employees here, but there's seven employees here and seven employees there and mm -hmm. seven employees there and seven employees there and seven, you know, and it's like, there's no reason that we couldn't all collectively get together and be like, hey, like, hey, we all work in the restaurant industry mm -hmm. and we all need to collectively have uh, you know, our health insurance taken care of, mm -hmm. or this taken care of, or this taken care of. Well, it would be easier to go to an insurance company as a group of like say 5,000 as opposed to seven. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't make sense for them to take a deal from us. And th this, is, this is where the restaurant union I think is fucking garbage. Mm -hmm. It's where they come in and they'll go and they'll take a hotel where it makes sense. Where they're like, okay, there's 500 people here. As opposed to looking at it and going like, hey, here's a neighborhood. Like this neighborhood right now, just in this neighborhood. We, we could we could you know gather from all the all the way up to Metropolitan, all the way down through Greenpoint. Mm -hmm. There's no reason that we can all not get together and be like, hey, not necessarily like, eh, I got a problem with this guy. We're gonna all shut mm -hmm. down, but we could all have collective health insurance. We could all have. Yeah, you could at least pay a group rate. Like that's exactly. all I'm asking. Like I, you know, this isn't crazy. I, I, I'm not. I'm not asking for a group rate on six people. I want to pay a group rate on 500 people. Mm -hmm. And I work in an industry that in New York is like something crazy. It's like the numbers are insane. It's well, like I mean, we're like, a huge part of the economy here. We're the largest part of the economy. We're the second largest part of the economy in New York outside of anything that is government. Uh, uh, introduced so no and besides we're part of what makes tourists like happen here like it doesn't when when, we, when everything went into shutdown everybody discussed this and it was it was there were two largest parts of the economy and 
one was government contracting. Yeah. Of course. Well, yeah. Buy bombs and guns and all your dumb shit. Like, whatever. It's all just tanks and stuff for the NYPD. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the NYPD just makes me laugh. <laughs> Fucking such a joke. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, my favorite part of the NYPD was during the pandemic. That shit was awesome. Dude, when I could drink an Aperol spritz on the street oh and nobody God. committed crimes because it was, was fine. Amazing. Fucking pigs. I, whatever. yeah, whatever. I just hate cops so much. During the fucking <laughs> pandemic, this fucking pig down in the Lower East Side fucking punched the kid in the face. I don't give a fuck. Dude, punched the kid in the face. This fucking undercover cop punched the kid in the face multiple times and got de fucking desk service. He's fucking on, he's got a fucking union. Yeah. And now me. Well, that's what I'm saying. If that fucker has a union, why don't I have Yeah, what union? the fuck, man? I never punched anyone in the face on the job. I have punched somebody once in the face on the job and they were much <laughs> deserving of so It's different. You were drunk. I was sober that time. It's the only time. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you what. How about this? I was more sober than that fucking cop that fucking punched the kid on the I'll fucking I'll tell street. you what. Whatever. Though. See. No, Those man. people. No. I. First of all, I hate cops. I don't mind saying it. Fine. Whatever. Fine. I have cops Fuck in my you. family. Fuck cops. If you join the police force at this point in time, fuck you. Hundred percent. Fuck you. I hate. I hate cops. But also, fuck ups. 